don't care what nobody say. Misha Lane and Stu still a fake ass couple to me. I don't care. <laughs> Your favorite favorite we are back for another episode review of marriage boot camp y'all hip-hop edition this is season 14 episode 6 boot camp betrayal as always church announcements y'all if you haven't done so just yet go ahead subscribe to my channel before you leave let me know you stopped by give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down hit the notification bell make sure your notifications are turned down and all that make sure you got your sanitizer I need you to, uh, if you sanitize and clean your hands today, I need you to mark hashtag free of that ooh wee down in the description box below. You might hear a little bit of humming. That's from my fan. Y'all, I feel like I'm going through the changes or something. I be hot all the goddamn time. I had to get a goddamn fan. I'm sorry. But look at y'all. It wasn't a whole lot that went on on this episode of, uh, Bearish Boot Camp. So this ain't gonna be no long review, y'all. But, uh, once again, if you have washed your hands today, a couple times today, put down the description box. Hashtag free of that ooh wee. Let's go ahead and get to this review, y'all. Hopefully, y'all are ready for it because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go ahead and get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So it picks up. Oh, before I get into it, y'all, let me show y'all this shirt. My um, my boo Tracy made for me. Queens are born in June. They show sure is <laughs> precisely June 27th to be exact. That's the little shirt she made me, y'all. I'm gonna put her information down in my description box below. Also, I almost forgot to tell y'all. Auntie done got a whole P.O. box, y'all. I'm stepping up there. Moving on up. I will have the information to my P.O. box down in the description box below. So everybody that's been asking me, how can you send me stuff? Where can you send it to? <laughs> Auntie got a uh, whole P.O. box. I'm going to leave the information down below. But look here. All right, y'all. So this episode picks up where the last one left off, right? Everybody in the house trying to decide what they're going to do with Bianca and Chosen. Because, you know, they done caught their ass up in a whole doggone lie. Now, they want to stay there and work on their relationship. But at the same time, Chosen's got a whole situation with the white girl that caused Bianca to uh, take a $200 Uber ride to go out there and whoop that ass. So, although they want to work on their relationship, he still got a whole nother situation going on. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I swear to God, it ain't that Coronas. I swear to God, it ain't that Uwe. I just I had too many of these ooh-wees. I'm in a full unicorn mood right now. <laughs> I done had too many of these shits. But um, um, Styles P, Ajua, and Michelle, they go up there and they talk to them to try to get a better understanding. Because you know um, Dr. Ish sent them to their room like some damn kids. Told them, y'all stay y'all ass up here until we come send for you. Don't come downstairs. Don't come for nothing. Ain't nobody sent for you. So you stay your ass up in this goddamn room. They go up there to talk to them, try to get a better understanding because, you know, they want them to stay, but they're just trying to decide, like, what the hell to do with them. Now, Shiny and um, CeeLo, they like, look here, this ain't to try to figure out if you if you friends boot camp. This is the, the whole marriage thing. We're trying to work on some shit. So if y'all trying to really work towards being in a relationship, you know, then y'all deserve to be here. But if y'all here on some flugazi shit, then y'all need to go ahead and take y'all ass on up out of here because ain't, go, ain't nobody got time for that shit. Now, the next morning, all the couples are laying in their bed and, like, they talking because, you know, everybody's just waking up. Now, Bianca and Chosis is talking. Chosis is talking. Now, conveniently, this nigga got a DM from this dude saying that he had messed around with Bianca. Now, how convenient that that happens right when you got caught out on your BS of still having a whole girlfriend on the side. You done got caught out on your shit. Now, all of a sudden, you got a DM from some dude claiming that he had messed around with Bianca. Now, Bianca said it was when they were on a break. They weren't together, but now all of a sudden, he big mad or whatever, right? So, like I said, everybody was talking, but ultimately, it was the old school. CeeLo and Shiny and Ajwa and Styles P that sort of gave them that, that um, like, old school love. It's like, look here. Y'all are at a point now to where y'all can be away from all the BS. You can focus on your relationship. And this is good for y'all if this is something that y'all need to work towards your relationship. So we vouch for y'all to stay here. Hopefully this is something that can help y'all. Now, if you on here on some other BS, 
Now, you know, let nigga know now. We not even finna sit up here and waste our goddamn time with y'all goddamn little young asses. We just trying to give you, you know, give you a little lead way. I thought that was good of them, though. Because, you know, Jocelyn was ready to, like, you know, kick rocks with open toe shoes. I don't give a damn. Everybody here trying to work on a relationship. They on some other bullshit. The bitch can't bow down and respect me. She was ready to kick their ass to the curb. Michelle and Stu really don't count. Bless their hearts. That's all you can say about them. Bless their hearts. They really don't count. But like I said, it was good that the old schools was like, you know, we going we gonna to give you some, some good um, tools that you can use to help work this shit out. You can learn from this. You can grow from this. Some good old hip-hop love. I was like, oh, that's just sweet. Y'all know, today's exercise is where they both had to be in this big-ass shirt and pants, and they had to do different activities together. Um... The point of the exercise is for them to work together. Both people can't wear the pants in the relationship. Somebody has to take the lead. The other person has to be willing to just sort of communicate and, you know, take on that role or whatever, right? Now, it was funny as hell to see these fools out there struggling, getting frustrated. First, they had to solve some kind of building block thing. Next up, each couple had their own individual thing that they had to do. Like, Stu and Michelle had to cook. And, um... Was Bianca and Charles had to do some exercises. Um, Johnson and Ballistic had to build a tent. They actually did good on their little tent. I think that they did without. I thought they did. They did the best as well. CeeLo and Shawnee had to put some shelves together, and Styles P and Ajwa had to do like this little clay sculpture. It was funny as hell, y'all, because it was hot to the motherfucker. You know, niggas clammed up all together. That ain't good for no goddamn body. That shit was funny as hell, y'all. And they was constantly getting frustrated. Finally, y'all. After they had did their little task, everybody is back inside. They still chilling. They still got to be conjoined like Siamese twins together, right? Ballistic starts getting frustrated with Jocelyn because she just starts being Jocelyn. She just running off at the mouth, saying a little fly shit. Jocelyn, I mean, uh, Ballistic was holding his own. Like, he was he was cool, calm, and collected. But Jocelyn just kept on going. Y'all know how she is with her mouth. She low-key cussing like, you, you, you talking to me like that. I'm the Puerto Rican princess. God damn it. You don't disrespect me like that. You bow down to me. Then yeah, she wasn't saying exactly that, but she was like going off. Ballistic was like this right here. He was like, uh-huh. Yep, you sure right. I'm glad these people is around because I'm, I'm not the, the Puerto Rican peanuts out your goddamn ass. Everybody looking uncomfortable as hell. Like, okay, do we sit here and pretend like we don't hear this shit? Do we step in? Do we tell her not to say that? Do we just act like we don't see this shit? Do we just ignore this shit? Like, it was awkward as hell. I was right there with him. Shawnee trying to keep the peace. Like, well, you know, hey, y'all just got to work together. But Shawnee was uncomfortable as hell, too. CeeLo was looking straight ahead. Like, okay, if I pretend like I don't see these hoes, then I don't see these hoes. I don't know nothing that's going on with these hoes. Now, they go back outside. Dr. Ish comes out, and they tell him that they have this other obstacle that they have to do. It's like this obstacle course, it's obstacle course that they have to go through. One partner is wearing these drunk goggles, and the other partner has a bullhorn and is shouting off instructions to them where they have to go. Instructing them, like, look here, go here, do this. Now, each couple, the point of it wasn't who finished first. It's who did the best listening. Now, of course, Bianca and Chosen, they finished first. They was young, fresh, got good ears. They did good or whatever, right? Now, um, Jocelyn and Ballistic actually were the ones that won because they did the best communication throughout the whole thing. Through the whole tent building, like I said, Jocelyn was like, I'm not into tent buildings that good, so I let Ballistic do everything and I just follow his lead. That's because she was listening to him, let him do every goddamn thing. And that's what works for them. When she try to lead them, she don't know what the fuck she doing. And she be goddamn messing up. And y'all know Jocelyn, her, 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 was she too big for her goddamn britches? Like the old school goddamn say. She too big for her goddamn britches. When she let this nigga lead the way each time, it did good. And so they ended up winning. Now, the worst couple was Stu and Michelle. Now, when um, Jocelyn found out she won, child, she started twerking. She was all on the floor, dog walking and all. And I said, bitch, they walking like a motherfucking dog. All on the goddamn floor. Stu and Michelle, they was the one that lost. So the winners actually actually get this gourmet meal, candlelight meal, and it's made by the losers. So Stu is pissed off. Stu is like, okay, I'm going to do anything that I can to ruin their goddamn dinner because he pissed off because he didn't goddamn win. Now, I knew from the jump there wasn't going to be no goddamn dinner because y'all know the Puerto Rican princess. 
So right as they get ready to sit down and have their little dinner, Misha Lay and Stu come out, introduce themselves like, thank you for coming to the MBC um, restaurant. I'm your, your, you know, your hostess and blah, 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 blah. So he says he gonna start them off with some fresh spring water. Child, Misha Lay gonna get two glasses of water out the goddamn hot tub. That shit was funny as hell. Josh was like, you just gonna give me that dirty ass goddamn water? What the fuck is wrong with you? Child, the whole night, Stu was messing up their diet. He gave them, gave these hoes a champagne salad. He put some lettuce in a champagne glass, went out there, gave them some dry salad. He ain't put no croutons in the bitch. No blue cheese. No goddamn nothing. No, no, no carrots. No nothing up in that bitch. He was messing up their order all goddamn night. And of course, Jocelyn and Ballistic, they ended up getting pissed off. And, you know, they left anyway. But the point was for him to just mess up their dinner any damn way. But it was really something behind that. Stu was just fed up altogether. He was starting to come to the realization that everything... It's really one-sided in the relationship. It's always about Michelle, how much he's not pleasing Michelle, how much he's not doing to make her feel this, that, and other, whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. But it's never about him and his feelings and what he wants and what he needs. So he's starting to realize, you know what? Nigga got feelings. I shouldn't have to be dealing with your bullshit neither. Why should I have to suffer? Because of what these other niggas done did to you. That ain't right. Now, afterwards, when it's all said and done, Dr. Ish is outside talking with each one of the couples about the day. He gives each one of them a word, like it was a C word, like communication, collaboration, I don't know, sir. I don't know. Just a bunch of different stuff to start with C's, caring, and all of that, that they need to work on each as an individual couple. Now, once again, when it came to Michelle and Stu, it was something that was just off about them. They, I don't care what nobody say. If, I'd be surprised if they leave together when all of this is said and done. Because even at the end of the show, they were still outside arguing. She was like, you know, I'm just, I'm fed up with you. I'm sick of you. And he's like, well, bitch, I'm sick of you too. Everything is always about you, never about Stu. What about me? Nigga got feelings too. Everything is always about you. Child, and then right before it ended as well, Bianca and Chosen is in their room. And once again, they're arguing over this dude that just so happened to conveniently send him a DM. Now that you done got caught up in your shit. That he used to mess around with Bianca. And they arguing over that. Now, I don't know how many more episodes it is after this. But, child, it can't be too many more. Like I said, I will be surprised if Misha Lay and Stu stay together after this. As we already know, Bianca and Chosen, as of right now, she's pregnant and they are not together. Um, She has it all over Instagram. They're not together. But, child, um. The only people that's really going to make it is the people that came in there together that was strong and that's going to stay together and the people that's still together now, which we already know. But anyway, y'all, if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know, drop it down below and let me know. It was not a whole lot that went on with this episode. It was quite boring, if you ask me. I'm just saying, it was funny, but it was a little bit boring. But anyways, y'all, um, once again, I will leave the information down for Tracy. She makes these handy-dandy, cute little shirts, little yang-yang around the house. Shout out to Funky Dineva. And also, my P.O. Box information will be in the description below. If there was anything that I missed, y'all, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo will clean her hands, and she will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.